Hey everyone, it's Ron Johnson, and this is the Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. Got a loaded show today. Anthony Lapanta, play-by-play guy for the Wild. I've also covered some games with Anthony Lapanta. He's a jack of all trades. He's done some college football with me, so we're going to talk about that. Which one he likes better, hockey or football? I think I know the answer, but I do know he likes those trips out to Vegas. But top of the hour, we got to talk about the Wolves. The Wolves actually won. Now, this was a game that nobody thought they could win at half because of what was going on with this team. Absolutely crazy, bonkers moments. I mean, you can't make this up unless you're in Hollywood, but the Wolves still found a way to win. We'll talk about at what cost coming up next on the Ron Johnson Show. Locked on Sports Minnesota Podcast. It's endless Minnesota Vikings talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. Now the Ron Johnson Show. On the field, in the broadcast booth, Ron Johnson is Minnesota sports. He's played with them, hung out with them, and grown up with all the big names in Minnesota sports. They're hanging out with Ron Johnson. It's the Ron Johnson Show on the Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast. And it starts now. Hey, beautiful people. It's a Monday and you know what that means. That means there was a ton of action over the weekend that we got to discuss. Of course, we got to talk about the Timberwolves. We're going to talk a little bit about the Masters because our pool, the way it fought, finished out, like, I think I'm going to do this because the winner of our Locked On Sports pool for March or for uh, the Masters won. And I'll tell you how because I think that's my way of going moving forward. But before I, before I get into the show, people, remember, this episode is brought to you by Empowered by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Just go to FanDuel.com backslash Locked On to get started today. It's going to make every moment more. I know for the Masters, it made the Masters even more compelling for me. I know uh, I know Sam had put, put some money down on the Masters with FanDuel, uh, and we'll talk about that, how that finished up with him at some point in the show. But it's time to get Sam Ekstrom into the show. Uh, Sam... It was a loaded weekend, as I said. We got Anthony LaPanta joining us. Uh, he's going to stick around for the Daily Three. And the Daily Three is going to be different today. We're going to do a little fast pace. We're going to mm-hmm. give Anthony LaPanta like one minute. See if he can under one minute answers. Put him on the hot seat for some of these. And then we're going to close out the show. But, Sam, the Timberwolves, they lose Jaden McDaniels punching a wall because of a call mm-hmm. that he didn't like walking into the tunnel. So we know that. But at what cost? They, they lost him. Rudy Gobert is now at odds with his teammate when he punched Kyle Anderson in the chest. Now, again, he didn't Draymond Green and Jordan Poole a bit because that would have been horrible. Like if he had actually connected in the face and hit him in the jaw or something and kind of Jordan pulled him, um, that would have been bad. Like Jordan Poole, Draymond Green, I don't think they'll ever get over that. Like you can say whatever you want. We can win a championship. We can be friends. We can, But once you sucker punch me in the face, like, and again, don't walk up on anybody when you think you're about to fight. But also, when you think it's your teammate, you don't really think he's just going to swing on you like that. And so I get both sides of it. But Rudy Gobert didn't go that far. He kind of just punched him in the chest, armish, like like big brother would do little brother. Um, and so Kyle Anderson allegedly, which we don't know if this is true or not at halftime, told him I beat your butt in the locker room. Jay McDaniels punches a wall, breaks his hand. And so now you're down two players to injury. You now have to rely on Cat and Rudy Gobert as your only bigs. And you have Kyle Anderson, who's going to come in. Who knows if he's going to pass Rudy Gobert the ball now. And you're <laughs> playing a Lakers team that's hot. Everybody in the playoffs, and I looked at this, everybody in the playoffs heading into now uh, had a hot streak besides, and this is why we've been saying this, Sam. You and I kept saying this. I'd rather play the Kings. Everybody else now online is saying they would rather play the kings like everybody said me and you Mm -hmm. said we've been saying this for a month now oh yeah i'd rather play the kings now when i watched the show yesterday i watched a couple national shows yesterday and a lot of other these national analysts were saying the same thing of saying like do you really want to play the suns right now wouldn't wouldn't you rather like like if you have a chance to play the suns and you're the five seed wouldn't you rather tank and get the six seed to play the kings and that's what a lot of people thought was going to happen with the Warriors uh, and with the Clippers. Like one of them might tank so they don't have to, which the Warriors did get out of it. The Warriors do not have to play the Suns. The Clippers do. The Warriors have to go play the Kings, which I think that's the Warrior series now, honestly. I mean, if you look at their last yeah. uh, their last 10, they're 8-2, and two, which means heading into the playoffs, they're hot. Heading into the playoffs, they're ready to go. They got all their guys back. Andrew Wiggins is back with the team, so they're hot. The Timberwolves... 
if I were to take out these injuries of those two players on the on the team, and I were to take out the fight, and they just won this last game, and they were seven and three in their last ten, you would say, you know what, this is a pretty hot team that can go and beat the Nuggets. But then when you add in all the drama, all the daytime talk, soap opera TV stuff that's going on within this team. I'm just I'm just not sold that they can walk in and beat the Lakers and take over that seven seed to go play the Grizzlies. And I don't know if you want the seven seed. This is the problem. If you had to pick the Grizzlies or the Nuggets, I'm probably and this is just me. I'm looking at the stars of the Grizzlies versus the stars of the Nuggets. I feel like with two bigs, the Timberwolves actually match up pretty well because they can make sure one big is always on your uh, Joker. And so I, I just feel like the Timberwolves good. But now you're you're losing energy in Jaden McDaniels. You're losing like just dumb, dumb mm-hmm. stuff. Like this is going to be mm-hmm. a 30 for 30 again of how the Timberwolves traded all their first round picks up to like 2029 20, for Rudy Gobert. And they ended up in the eighth seed. They could have just kept the team they had to be the eighth seed. And that's what's most frustrating for me. I don't know. What did you think about the weekend, Sam? Oh, I mean, how ironic, too, because Jaden McDaniels has been the guy that they say he's got this ice in his veins he's never happy he's never sad he's got one look on his face never shows emotion because he's just so calm and collected and then he's the guy that breaks his hand in the tunnel you've lost your best wing defender so now kyle anderson has to step up torian prince has to step up um this might be the final nail in the coffin of any hope you had of trading Rudy Gobert. like if you wanted this offseason to try to trade him for pennies on the dollar Mm -hmm. this might be the last straw and like I, 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 from what I heard, D'Angelo Russell did not get along with Rudy Gobert either. So there was some contention in the locker room early in the season. They trade D'Angelo Russell. And now the Gobert punched to Anderson. And did you notice, Ron, how everybody came to Anderson's defense? Like yeah. Dorian Prince jumps up and pushes Rudy Gobert away. Rudy Gobert is the one who got removed from the huddle, removed from the court. Um, not Kyle Anderson. And I, I, I'm pretty sure Kyle Anderson was chirping too, right? Yeah. Um, oh, he, you see his, you, I mean, I'm not a lip reader, but you could see what he said. So, yeah, yeah, probably wasn't <laughs> PG. Probably wasn't no, meant for a family wasn't. show. Sports uh, Center actually, a Sports Center uh, because of Sham. Sports Center had like the audio, so they put like a transcript of it, and they 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 bleeped out the expletives. But I mean, yeah, he 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 basically called him a b word and and you know said shut the f up like so. I don't know what Rudy Gobert was actually what else was going on, but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't PG. Um, I don't think, and the reason I think everybody came and not, they just came to his defense. They're like, look, man, we argue all the time. You can't just punch him. And I think that's why they came to his defense. I don't think they were choosing sides. I just think they were saying you're wrong period. So you need to chill out. Um, but everybody got held back. Kat and, and Anthony Edwards kind of, you could see them look up like, wait, what's going on? Um, just not a good look. At the end of the day, though, they did win the game. They were down 30 to 18 to start the game. By third quarter, they were down by two, 85, 83. And then they found a way to win that game. So because even at going into half, they were down. And so after the hand punch at halftime, after the Rudy Gobert removal, they still found a way to climb and win. So that's something good to look at. Do you want to win and get that seventh seed? Maybe just for energy, just for positivity to say, look, we were the eighth and now we're the seventh. We're going to go play the Grizzlies. Maybe they find a way to overcome the Grizzlies. Who knows? Um, but Grizzlies but, lost Steven Adams, their big man, too. So if the right. Wolves want to go big and just try to overpower them and force them to you know, put their backup forwards on the floor. That could be one way to go about it. Yeah, and get it, because I, I was always – I was for a small ball all season, and um, clearly, you know, the Nuggets, you know, they do have a dominant big, and it's working for them. They don't have two, uh, but the 76ers as well have a dominant big. We know – I guess you can consider the Greek freak a dominant big. So, But, they, but it's not – I don't think it's room for two, and I think that's the question of can this Twin Towers things work thing work? We'll see in the playoffs. We'll see what happens with this Lakers team in a couple of days. They have to play the Lakers. The Lakers are hot right now, too. Like, they've, they've, they've found a way to win eight, eight out of the last two games, too. So, yeah, you just don't know. And maybe it was the addition of D'Lo and D'Lo finally merging in with the team. Uh, but it's it's just interesting how this has all played out. And the team they lost to in the Clippers – um, actually, the fifth seed. So the Lakers losing to the Clippers, people were like saying, oh, they're going to let Russell Westbrook shoot. The Clippers are actually good. Like the Clippers are the five seed. They have two of the best uh, two-way players in the game, if not the best two-way, Kawhi and uh, Paul George. So it it just fits the narrative that uh, Clippers versus Suns. Now defensively, I like that because you got Paul George or Kawhi, probably Kawhi on KD and then Paul George on Devin Booker. That's going to be a good series. 
And then you got Wessel, Rus- Wessel Westbrook on on uh, Chris Paul, who actually I would take Westbrook over Paul for athleticism. Like I think he can blow by Chris Paul. So the Clippers series does get like it gets a little bit more interesting now versus the Suns because they do have two elite defenders and they have two guys willing to play defense the entire game where there's not a lot of teams that have that or even care about playing defense. When you look at some of these scores uh, where like last uh, Saturday, I what the Wolves put up 80. In the first half, like first half, 151 for the game. Like, what is going on there? Like, nobody's playing defense. And so, you do have a team in the Clippers that two guys are playing defense, Sam. But we do have Anthony LaPanta uh, coming up in the in the hanging with Ron Johnson segment. He's a guy I did a couple games with for college football, uh, but he is your play by play guy uh, for the Wild. So, you hear his voice a lot. Um, he's a, a avid. Uh, dinner time guy he posts all his dinners every time he has a big dinner and then i see all the people kevin foulness and everybody trying to get invited and they never do get invited so we'll talk to anthony lapanta about that coming up next on the hanging with ron johnson segment but before we do that remember people you can download the locked on sports minnesota app on amazon fire and roku just go to your amazon fire and your roku device search locked on sports minnesota you can get all of our tv or, or sorry all of our shows and all of our videos right there on your tv and we have a word from our sponsors We are presented today by FanDuel Sportsbook. It's America's number one sportsbook. The NBA playoffs are coming down to the wire. We got the play-in, then we got the playoffs, NHL playoffs coming up. We just had the Masters. If you're a new customer at FanDuel, you can claim a no-sweat first bet. Up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, download the safe, secure FanDuel Sportsbook app. Bet on everything you can imagine, any line, any league. FanDuel lets you combine your bets within the same game for those same game parlays. Big possible payouts. New customers, no sweat first bet, up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. If you visit FanDuel.com slash locked on, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Well, as promised, Anthony LaPanta is joining us on the Hangover Ron Johnson segment. Anthony, I want to thank you for joining me. First off, uh, this is one of the questions I posed earlier, kind of threw out earlier to the people. You've done college football. And again, I didn't even know you were a college football guy until I looked at the uh, sheet when we were with FS1. And I'm like, Anthony LaPanta. I'm like, I know that name from hockey. And I'm like, there, there has to be a different one. And then I show up and it's you, you know, hair looking like, you know, you just came out the hairdresser, <laughs> uh, like you this. know. <laughs> Suit pristine, Anthony, or, or sorry, uh, Russo, like four feet from you because he can't be too far from you. And um, it, w- when you look at doing college football versus hockey, uh, is there one that you enjoy more um, or is it because you do hockey more? You know, what, what does that look like between the football hockey world? Well, I d- I've certainly done a lot more hockey now. When I was first starting out as a broadcaster, I did everything. Okay. And I actually, for a lot of years, I probably would have guessed that my best sport or the most likely sport where I would make the biggest step would have been baseball. Mm-hmm. And, but I, I loved them all. I did basketball games. I did a lot of football games back in those days, mostly high school, but I did some small college games as well. Had done a few gopher games back in the past before you and I worked together and I, I coach high school football. So I love football and they're, but they're very different. Every sport's very different. And Baseball is a lot more storytelling, a lot more downtime. Uh, basketball is probably the most similar to hockey, but even that's quite different. Uh, hockey and football are, are, I'd say the biggest difference is just the the pace of the game. Hockey never stops. Football, they stop. It's a great chance for an analyst to jump in, let you know what just happened, what he mm-hmm. expects might happen. They reset, restart with a, a huddle and then a formation and a snap. So there's a difference to them, but I, I really, there's something about every single sport that I really like. And so to say which one I like better would be a, a little bit of a misnomer. I've actually always wished I could do more football games mm-hmm. in the fall before hockey gets started every year. And I, yeah, maybe you and I will work together again someday, maybe. Yeah, no, I know I've, I've uh, talked to the guys over there at FS1 and uh, the team that hired us. And, uh, yeah, I think the biggest thing is that is finding time and uh, finding crews and, and what games are going to end up on TV. And I think that's the always the biggest key is which ones do they want to put on TV as as UCLA and USC move into the Big Ten. My guess is there will there will probably be more for Vegas, Reno, you know, uh, California opportunities 
um, because those big time teams like USC and UCLA are they're they're coming over to the Big Ten. So the West is going to be they're going to have to find teams uh, that they can get on there, and, and hopefully another Romeo Dubs, uh, you know, will jump out there. And, and and talking about that, man, you and I covered Romeo Dubs for a couple games, and uh, we both said that, and I said it every time. Like we talked about how good he was, how crazy of an athlete he is. He had Carson Strong at quarterback, um, but we both say like this kid is good. And when I bought it up in the draft talk, people were trying to figure out how I knew. And then, of course, I told him, like, look, we, we've covered a couple of games live, so I've seen this kid. And then he goes to the Packers. The Vikings don't take a chance on him. He goes to the Packers. Uh, and he actually ends up pretty being pretty good for A-Rodge. Uh, when, when you see a kid like that uh, do something like that, you know, how good does it feel to, to kind of be like, you know, we were there first. We were the ones that knew he would be this good before the world did. Yeah, it's kind of cool, actually. And if you remember, my son Vinny was along with us on those oh, yeah. trips as our spotter. And he and I were watching games a couple times this fall. And like, yeah, you remember that guy? That's yeah. We watched that guy. And, and I will tell you, that's a moment that we have or that I've had quite often with hockey players because there's so many that come from Minnesota. So there's yeah. a lot of guys that I've seen in the NHL who are guys that I watched play when they were in high school. And a lot, even a lot more that I've watched when they were in college. But, and it's pretty cool when you'll see a guy and say, yep, I watched that guy when he was 17 years old playing at Minnetonka. And so it is, those are, those are the kind of moments I've had a few of those, not pro level, but I love watching guys that like I coached in high school football. When you go see him play college football and uh, a couple times we've been on the road, I've had a chance to go see those guys play. There's always something about when you've seen a guy at a previous level, when in the case of watching high school players in Minnesota, nobody mm -hmm. knew about them. In right. the case of you and I seeing Romeo dubs, it's, it's, it was, it had a little bit of that feel to it because it was such an unknown. There weren't a lot of people that were aware of what was happening at Nevada. Correct. And it isn't like he was playing for Ohio state <laughs> where everybody knew who the guy was. And so, yeah, it was in, when we were sitting in the room one day, I remember, and, the other guys watching games with us are like, wait, you guys saw a Nevada game? We're like, we, were, we saw a couple Nevada games. We we know that team inside and out. Yeah, because uh, Carson Strong, you know, he's gone on to the NFL as well as a backup or a third string quarterback. You know, they're tight end as well, got drafted. And so, yeah, I mean, it was it was fun even for the Vikings because I did it on Vikings.com and, and for Fox 9 for their socials. And so we were all talking about that for and at the draft day deal. And, and when Romeo Dubs came up, I'm like, you know, I'm breaking down like, look, this kid can play in the slot. He can play outside like he's a shift. He's yeah. route runner, you know, so and so he catches everything. I forgot like about a... that tight end. They had the yeah. tight end, too. I yep. forgot about him. I remember yeah. I remember Carson Strong and Romeo Dubs, but at, uh, the I forget the tight end's name. But, man, he was a he was a huge human that could run. Yeah, and so he was a former receiver because that's the story we got from the coach who was a former Iowa that's grad. Right. And, uh, you know, he was telling us that he was a former receiver, you know, kind of like Ben Utech, big, strong, uh, but not fast. And so they're like, look, put some weight on, go, you know, I think you'll be a great tight end. And he ends up being a great tight end. I think that's the thing, um, you know, what people didn't realize is Carson Strong was a really good quarterback. You know, I thought the Vikings maybe should have given him a shot. Um, but no, that that's what's fun about doing those games is like you you always get to see little pieces. And again, we covered you know New Mexico State, we covered them, we covered uh, I forgot who else they played. Uh, but you know when you look at those teams, it's not like every team had a guy. But Nevada that year just had three guys that you're like, man, these are NFL caliber players and uh, i'll be interested to see where they end up and again the vikings could have maybe taken a flyer on romeo and then got him late but they had justin jefferson adam thielen and kj osborne so they thought they were good which they were um but it would have been fun to see him come and wear purple because then adam thielen has moved on and now you would have had your guy romeo vert with jj and kj like that would have been a, a good three-way uh, three to Hardway type of re remake of uh, the, the old receivers with Randy Moss, but neither of them are Chris Carter, so I'm not going to even go there. I don't want to end up on a preposterous statement tournament. Um, but when you look at this, LaPanta, when you talk about you and Michael Russo, so I want to get to that first. I had uh, Joe O'Donnell on the show. Uh, I had, I've, I've had Kevin Foulness. I've talked to Brandon Molesky. I did not realize, and I've been to Vegas with you guys. Like I did dinner with you guys. We did the casino together. Yeah. Um, you, you know, I heard the jokes about if your wife needs to find you, she just texts Russo. I had no idea though, that you guys actually take a trip together for fans to come with you. Tell me about that. Yeah, it's actually been great. And this year we're going to Sicily 
and it's uh, it's through a company called Define Destinations. They do all the planning, and and then they just basically ask us to help promote it, to, and okay. then we're the hosts of the show of the trip. And to be say the host makes it sound like we actually have a bigger role than we do. <laughs> we I basically just get on the bus every morning and tell stories, and and then we'll wander the streets of whatever town we visit, and have dinner together it's these trips have been amazing and for, it's i've been lucky we've i had never been to europe other than a, a trip to ireland maybe 30 years ago other than that i had never been over there and now we've had a chance to see all of northern italy florence venice como we had a chance to spend a half a week in a villa there then we another trip we went to the alps another trip we went to budapest prague and vienna this summer we're going to sicily it's been great and we've had great people we've got some people who have been on every trip and a few others each year that kind of jump in but we have a blast with it our tour guide does a great job setting up the trips picking what we're going to see picking what we're going to do in each city but then there's always, okay, now you guys are on your own in this town for the next three, four hours, and the bus picks us up at four to head back to wherever we're staying to go to dinner. And and then at dinner, you just kind of sit with a different group, a different couple that's on the trip, and they just want to hear the stories of mm. either behind the scenes with the wild, or the twins, or even just us, like with what our careers have been like and, and those kind of things. And and Michael's become a real good friend of mine over the years. I've been calling Wild Games now for 11 years. Wow. And so he and I have spent a lot of time together on the road. We share a love for food and wine, so that means that uh, we end up having dinner together quite often. And as you mentioned, he came out and met us in Vegas. I'd kind of forgotten about that, that we were in Vegas for the game, and he just came out to hang out in Vegas, yeah. which – he's a big Vegas guy, but, um, yeah, we've had a blast with it. It's, and it's been a, for me, it's been a lucky way to get a chance to go see some of these unbelievable cities. And my wife's been on all the trips. Uh, my daughter joined on one of them, my son on another. It's, uh, so it's been, it's been great. It's been a great opportunity for us. Yeah, no, and and speaking to your wife, I know you said those the flowers. That's just a normal Sunday flowers to the wife. Uh, I like that idea. Yeah. You know, just 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 to keep you know let her know you're still interested. Um, but but speaking <laughs> of that island, I'm guessing that's the famous island that we see on Instagram and Twitter whenever you prepare a meal and you take the picture of the meal, and then everybody uh, who wants to be invited asks, "How come they're not invited?" What does yeah. Kevin Faunus have to do to get invited to your house for dinner? Ugh. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> We'd have to have a lot of people decline first. It, uh, it's, we've, uh, we've had a lot of fun with it. It really is. Um, it's the Sunday dinner tradition is, has been, it's been amazing. And it, when I was growing up, we, my house was usually the host and it, mm -hmm. it was a lot of times it was, it wasn't like it is now, but it was, particularly Sunday football, my uncles would come over, we'd, we'd watch the Vikings game, we'd go out in the street, play touch football, my mom would make us dinner, and, and it was great. Well, as we then moved into my family, my, meaning like my children, we, we were living in this tiny little townhouse, only a couple hundred yards from where we are right now, but it, uh, we had four kids in a, I don't remember how many feet it was. My wife will yell at me for saying it was bigger than it was. I think it was maybe 1,300 square feet. And But we we wanted Sunday dinner to be a family deal. So we would mm -hmm. invite my brothers, my parents, and whoever wanted to come would come. And when we moved into this house, it grew a little bigger where it, it almost became a – we just had a text chain. And it was, hey, I'm home and off on a Sunday if you guys want to come. And it would – some weeks we might have 20, 24 people. Some weeks we oh, might wow. have 10. It just depended on who was in town. And it was my kids, their friends, their parents, and – and so it turned into, it just became a, a tradition that we love. And, and it's a little smaller now because my kids are older and it became more of a family and a few closer friends. But the dinner prep is all a part of it where we just love hanging out in the kitchen. And I've, I've learned a lot about food from my travels where it's most of what we make is stuff I try to copy from somewhere else. 
And then it's now we've gotten to where, hey, let's try it with that in it, or let's try throwing this in it, and let's make this sauce. And each of my kids kind of have a few of their specialties that they like and that they like to help with. And and uh, but now it's kind of fun because it's, hey, we're going to make an aioli for this tonight. I'd try it with maybe paprika, basil, lime, and they'll mess with it. No, nah, you know, I think I'm going to add some of this. I'm going to add some of this, and it's it's kind of fun to watch as it's turned into that, but. So the prep's the part, the meal's the part, and then my favorite part is when we all just kind of kick back in the chair and open a good bottle of wine and let the stories flow for another hour after dinner. And all my kids are adults. In fact, my youngest turns 21 today, so it's, oh, it's wow. unbelievable. As it's uh, we've got you know, all the babies are. I guess are now out of our hands. They're all legal adults. <laughs> so, so let me get this straight. So Matt Bodie, uh, Connor, like Erickson egg, uh, you know, all those guys, Ryan Hartman, they all have to decline first. Plus then probably another 20 yeah. to 50 <laughs> family members. And then everybody at K fan on the power trip. And then, if meat sauce can't yeah, come, maybe. then Kevin Foulness is next. Okay, got We'd it. We'd have to have got a it. lot of extra food that we just desperately needed to get rid of. <laughs> well, speaking of the wild and uh and hockey, let's let's jump with this one first because this was a hot topic all over Twitter this weekend. The Gophers played to or sorry, play not to lose, and they didn't play to win. And and I kind of understand where people go with this because they 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 used to say that all the time about Mike Zimmer's defense. You know, late in fourth quarters, they would say that about Glenn Mason and his defense and offensive call play calls and bowl games when he was up big. He would play to not lose. He wouldn't just keep dominating and play to win. Uh, they were saying the Gophers, and I didn't watch it all, so they were saying the Gophers were sitting back in their zone and all that stuff. And I'm not a hockey guy, so I kind of understand it, but I'm like, okay. And they're like, they're playing on their heels. They're just sitting back. They're just trying to stop the pucks versus going after them. Uh, what do you think attributed to that? Because that's not on the players to play that way. And so, like, where where do you think that came from with that 2-1 lead going into the third? Yeah, it's interesting. Well, and I just – I'd go back a little bit to the – I hear the same thing you always do about the only thing prevent defenses do is prevent winning and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. And, and there's, as you know, from, as a football guy, there are some times where, and I, I coach defensive backs at a high school level. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a much smaller level, but there are times where you sit there and you say, you know what, the, if we make them take eight snaps, we win the game. Right. So I know people sit upstairs and they look at it and say, well, look at all, you're just getting diced up. You should keep doing this. Well, the only way we lose the game is if they hit a big play because of time or whatever the case might be. So I know sometimes it, it, the perception is that you've hurt your chances to win by sitting back when in reality, by keeping the clock running, you've assured that you're going to win the game. But what's great, what what happens is every time that you don't win, then that's what people point to. They don't point to the 17 times that you went in the prevent defense and you did win. They just look at it the time that it didn't work. From a hockey perspective, it's a little bit different in that sometimes it just kind of happens, and it, you'll because it happens for a couple reasons. One, the team that's pressing, they're coming at you in waves, so you have a tendency to say, well, I'm not going to make a mistake. I'm not going to make a mistake. We got to sit back. Not, it, it isn't even a sit back. It's just we. you're on your heels because of how hard they're coming. Right. I don't think coaches ever sit in a room and say, hey, guys, let's just sit back and try to defend for 20 minutes. They never say that. It's just human nature. When the other team's coming hard, guys have a tendency to back off. Coaches at every level of hockey have been trying to fight this Dean Evison talks about it. Like we want to keep playing. We want to keep going. Well, you want to keep playing. You just have to do it in a smart fashion. And that just means you can't have an extra guy jumping up in the rush offensively. And, but sometimes by doing that, that's all it takes to then, then you get on your heels for one shift. It's a momentum game. Now it's a second shift. Now you're, now you really feel like all you're doing is hanging on for dear life. And in the specific case of this Gopher game, I, I will. I was I was calling a wild game at the time. I had the Gopher game on on a, a second monitor and was watching it relatively closely. It worked out where we were at intermission for about half a period each time, and I didn't think Minnesota looked like they were on top of their game really from the start. And mm -hmm. I 
I think the numbers would support that. What they, I think they ended up with only like 15 or 16 shots on goal for the whole game. And the first period, I remember watching, they were up one zip and the shots were like seven to three. And I, I just thought, boy, this just doesn't look like it's being played at the pace that I've seen the Gophers play. So Quinnipiac probably deserves some credit for that. But I think it was, I think the way that Quinnipiac got the tying goal sometimes is that's tough to overcome. When you give up a goal late in regulation like that, it's, Mm -hmm. I I heard a couple of players say things like they thought they'd be able to get it reset and get back in overtime, but it ended so fast that they didn't get a chance to do it. It's a, it's such a, a deflating thing when you give up that, that goal six on five at the end of the game, it's. It's a difficult thing for young athletes to to put behind them, and you know it'd be like a guy in the Masters that three putts 18 to wind up in a playoff. How do you then step onto the first playoff hole and not still have that in the back of your mind? It's it's tough to erase that, and I I know Bob Mosco is going to be beating himself up over this for a long time, and I just. It, I would. I wasn't inside that room, but I'd be absolutely certain it wasn't the team strategy to say, "Let's just try to hold on and win this game two to one." Right. But sometimes it just kind of happens that way. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, of course, Twitter, Twitter warriors. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has an. My, my, my question, and I think, and that's where I got that from. A lot of people were commenting on my tweet. I just said how because I remember early on they were up, and then all of a sudden I turned back and they had lost in, in overtime, and I'm like, how does that happen? But you know, everybody has an opinion, uh, and that's why I like to go to the pros like yourself to kind of figure that out. Yeah. Uh, last quick one before well, we jump over to the it's daily. It's unfortunate three. because the, they really – this was maybe their year. I really like their yeah. team, love the defensive core, good goaltending, and then uh, maybe as good a first line as the University of Minnesota has ever had. And I think I think Bob deserves wow. a lot of credit for what he did to – to get that team back to that game, but also just to restore the life and the energy you saw it at Mariucci arena this year. It, it looked like the old days again, and he deserves some credit for that. Yeah, it was, it was kind of weird because I remember watching it. I think Boston won it last year, year before last. And I just remember like watching that and go for fans feeling like, you know what, we were going to be there. We're going to be back there. And they were like, they, they were there. Um, and it just didn't work out. But again, and I saw a lot of players getting picked up going to the NHL. So I don't know what that means exactly if they're going to, you know, come back to the Gophers or they're going to just go to the NHL and be done with college. Uh, Cause I know hockey is a weird thing with juniors from high school to the pros. It's, it's all a lot different than the NFL the NFL. You leave, you're done. Like we're not, we're not doing all this extra stuff. Uh, but one quick one, you're the wild guy. So let's talk about the wild really quick before we jump into the daily three, uh, four points back two points back from second place when you look at you know i when i was listening it was four to one so i'm like oh they can get three and then it ends up being five to three what do they need to do these last three games they got the blackhawks they got the jets and they got the predators to try to at least make up some of those points and and first probably is out of reach that four points that's a big gap but two points is doable the way they are able to score in bunches sometimes how do they head into the playoffs with that having career back uh, he was back, right? Carrillo did play. He was, yeah. yeah. He played. Yep. Uh, he played Saturday against St. Louis, and I think it's more. I think right now it's they're not going to be able to catch Colorado. Four points in three games is is unrealistic. Dallas owns the tiebreaker against them, so they're two points behind the Stars, but they'd have to overtake Dallas. Dallas has a has a relatively easy schedule with they play Detroit and then they play St. Louis twice. Mm-hmm. I think it's most likely they finish third and, and wind up facing Dallas in the first round. But I, I think the biggest thing is they've got to be healthy. And yep. having Caprisa back Saturday was a step in the right direction. They got Gus Nyquist back. He made his wild debut on Saturday. Unfortunately, they lost Jules Erickson Eck the game before in Pittsburgh to an injury. It doesn't look like he'll be ready for game one of the playoffs, which will probably be next week on either Monday or Tuesday, depending on the opponent. So I, I think right now they're just, they just want to make sure they play the game the right way, these final three, play them like the Wild have played most of the second half of the season when they've been as good as anybody in the NHL. The three games prior to the win over St. Louis, they had kind of taken a step back. Couple, they had lost twice to Vegas, once to Pittsburgh, and it was, they just didn't look like they were on top of the game. So I think the biggest thing they're looking for in these final three, they want to win them. They'd love to catch one of those teams and get home ice advantage in the first round of the playoffs. But I think the most important thing is to make sure that one, they're playing the game the way they've been playing it for the last two months, really, mm-hmm. and then two is. 
to make sure that they're as healthy as they possibly can be. I they play in Chicago tonight. It's a national TV game, so I'm not with the team, and I, I, I would guess we won't see a full wild lineup tonight, and then we'll probably see most of their guys back in Tuesday night against the Jets at home. Well, there you have it from Andy Lapanta. The Wild have a tough stretch, but of course, it's all about the playoffs. If they play the Stars, you win that. It doesn't matter anymore. And then nobody wants to deal with the Avalanche. I've heard, and so, but eventually you got to. That's do a it. true statement. You've heard <laughs> accurately. <laughs> but if you want to, if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. And in the Avalanche, I mean, I think last year they were dominant too, and they just continue to do it. But remember, people, you can check out our Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast on YouTube, following every Twins, Wild, Vikings, or Wolves game. Just get our Locked On team hosts are broadcasting live with team insiders. Never miss a podcast by subscribing wherever you get your podcasts. You can subscribe on YouTube. You can watch the video, see Anthony Lapanda's beautiful face and those flowers for his wife. Or you can also subscribe on iHeartMedia, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you get your iTunes just download subscribe and like and share and let us know what you think and we have a word from our sponsors thanks a lot ron we are brought to you by built bar people have been voting at builtmarchmadness.com for their favorite bar or puff trying to enter for a chance to win a 12-month subscription to built or win a free box of built straight to their door and why they're the best protein bars in the universe they're so amazing you won't believe they're actually good for you. They've got 100% real chocolate. How can they be good for you? Well, their protein is super high. Their sugar and calories, super low. They've got great collagen protein. It fuels your body, makes you feel good, gives you a pick-me-up in the afternoon. Uh, if you're going to the gym, going out, maybe it's golf season, get out to the golf course. I know Anthony LaPanta enjoys that. BuiltMarchMadness.com right now, where you've been voting for your favorite bars and puffs, picking up a box or two while you're there. And you can get a discount locked on 15 at checkout built.com when you can load up on built bars, built bars, check them out today. And now it's time for the daily three and what better guy to have a fast paced game than one of the best play by play fast place announcers, uh, play by play guys, Anthony LaPanta. We're going to give you about 30 to 45 seconds. Each question. Sam's going to lead the way. Take it away, Sam. All right, Anthony, uh, as recently as this year, you've done some high school hockey play-by-play. You've done Gophers hockey play-by-play in the past, and of course you do wild play-by-play. Curious of the differences between those various calls at those levels. Well, I think the biggest difference is the preparation. It's high school hockey. It becomes so much more work behind the scenes to try to find the information on these players. It's just not as readily available. NHL, there's a plethora of information there if you're willing to spend the time to look for it. And then college is somewhere in between. The access to the players is a little bit different. So it's I think a lot of the difference is the preparation. But for me, once the game starts, yeah, the NHL is a little faster. College hockey probably in between and high school a little slower. But it's it's you're just trying to capture the moment. And I know that... I love doing the high school games because I know for those guys, a lot of times the games we're doing are their big rivalry games, and that might be the biggest game they've played in their life at that point. So I try to make every game sound like it's the seventh game of the Stanley Cup final because I know to the guys playing it might be that big of a deal. And I'm just you just you just don't want to miss the moment. So when there's a great an overtime goal, whether it be a high school game or a Stanley Cup playoff game, you want to get it right. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. The same football, the same thing. I've done high school, college, and pro football. I am reversed. It is hard to find high school information, period, especially for high school football in Minnesota. Hockey is probably a lot more, but college is just more players. The NFL is easy because you know the names, and there's only going to be certain guys making catches and certain guys making plays, so you don't have to even deep dive too much into, like, the sixth receiver. Uh, so that's why I think, for me, pro is easier. What you got next, Sam? Yeah, Anthony, I think your first year is wild play-by-play. I think that kick-started this run of 10 out of 11 playoff appearances for the Wild. I know the years kind of run together. The dates, for me at least, get murky. Maybe you can recall. But is there is there a certain Wild team in that stretch that you think underachieved or left some meat on the bone? Because I know they've struggled to get past that second round and oftentimes the first round in the past decade. Yeah, it's been it's been a lucky run for me. It coincided with this, that's for sure. This is eleven years for me, and ten of them have been in the playoffs. So it's that's been lucky. I think the what sometimes gets lost in there is that yes, the Wild have number one. It's hard to make the playoffs that many years in a row. There's no team in the league. Well, Pittsburgh could this year make it eleven out of eleven, but otherwise nobody else has made it more often over that stretch. Second thing is that they ran into some pretty good teams during that time. The first three years, they got knocked out by Chicago, and two of those years, 
the Hawks went on to win the cup. They had a year where they faced Winnipeg when they had everything going, Dallas when they had everything going. I'd say the teams that maybe, I think there's two years where they lost a series that they should have won, and both of those were against St. Louis. One was last year. I thought the Wild were better than the Blues, but it was pretty close. So the year I'd say that they really underachieved was 2017. They had finished second in the division to Chicago that year. I think they might have been second best in the entire Western Conference. And then they got beat by a Blues club that was nowhere close. Jake Allen stood on his head. The Wild lost four out of five. They lost the first game at home in overtime after they had outshot the Blues something like 46 to 20. Just couldn't score. That's the year I think that they left something on the table. That was a year I thought they had a chance to, to really make a deep run and they got beat in the first round. Well, maybe this is the year, so we'll see. We'll see. What you got next, Sam? What's the last one? Yeah, last one, Anthony. You've called a lot of players for the Wild, aside from the obvious ones, the Parisis, the Suitors, the Caprizovs. Is, is there someone who stands out to you that gets maybe overlooked or is a little underrated in terms of talents you've seen on the ice? Uh, well, I think they've got a few guys, but to me, <clears throat> the two that stand out, are our top two defensemen now, Jared Spurgeon and Jonas Brodeen. I think those two guys are they're terrific guys. They're terrific players, and they are team first and defense first guys. So they might never put up the kind of numbers that get them the notoriety around the league, but I'm telling you, the reason why this team's been in the playoffs as often as they have, these guys have been a part of most of that. They arrived within a year, maybe two, of that 11-year stretch, and they've been the core of this team. They've been the backbone of the team all along. They're just, they're smooth skaters. They are efficient. They are responsible. I, I think those two guys stand out the most as the, as the most underrated guys for sure. For me with hockey, I mean, my most underrated guy, of course, um, I can't remember the kid's name. But it's not Adam Banks. I thought Adam Banks was kind of overrated with Mighty Ducks. Uh, <laughs> they just had those guys at the at the arena a couple of weeks ago. They had, I know. I think yeah, Audra Martin. Audra Martin is like a huge Mighty Ducks fan or something. So I heard she geeked out and kind of ran down there to meet him. And um, I, I think that's who it was. I'm pretty sure that's who who was there, and she couldn't wait to yeah, meet him. Yeah, he something. was so, one of them. I know for sure. Yeah, I, and I got to tell you, I was more of a. I was more of a slap shot guy, a young blood guy <laughs> than I was a Mighty Ducks fan in terms of hockey movies. But, but those guys were there. It was kind of cool. The, there were, I think it was maybe people just a hair younger than me were more Mighty Ducks fans than the others. Yeah, it took me a while to even understand what a cake eater was because I know Mighty Ducks did that <laughs> um, until I got to Minnesota and started listening to K-Fan. And I'm like, oh, okay, now I understand. It's it just now makes sense. Lives in, yeah, it made sense. It made sense. Well, I want to thank Anthony DePanda for joining me on the Ron Johnson Show, the Hanging Ron Johnson segment, and the Daily Three. Uh, can't wait to see you on the rest of these calls, the rest of the season. And hopefully your luck, maybe you can bring some luck to the uh, – to the because I know when you and Russo get on the tables in Vegas – you guys seem to think you have some luck, so maybe you got to figure out whatever seats you need to sit, wherever Russo needs to sit in comparison to you, figure it out so that the Wild can pull this off and, and maybe upset the world, maybe beat the Avalanche, maybe end up in the in the, in the the Stanley Cup final um, or finals. I can't remember which one. I know NBA finals and then NHL final. One of the ones doesn't use an S. But either way, Anthony, I want to thank you for joining me and, uh, you know, have a good one, man. Yeah, anytime, guys. It was fun. Well, yeah, Sam, Anthony LePanta, I was going to jump into it, but I was like, we, we got to let him go because he was talking about hockey movies. And I know for you, there's some movies you haven't started watching yet. So I feel like Anthony LePanta just gave you some homework because you got to come. You, eventually, you got to watch them because, I, you know, I haven't seen Young Blood. I don't think I've seen that one. Neither have um, I. So I, I know there's maybe some hockey movies. I just got to find time. I don't know. Maybe my, one of my daughter's uh, softball game trips uh, in between games instead of just sitting there with the parents. I just put on some headphones and and watch a movie or something. I don't know. But uh, Anthony LePanta brought us some good stuff. We, we we talked all day with the rest of the week people too we're going to jump into the rest of the week because the weekend was loaded with the masters really quick to talk about the masters we had a locked on pool reggie wilson won reggie wilson didn't even pick his team sam auto drafted and when he auto drafted i saw those names and i'm like yeah he's not gonna win this and then he wins like big names one i'm glad i didn't keep rory uh because he never you know he didn't make the cut um I, i'm kind of annoyed that i didn't take kepka because i took uh, uh cam smith because of Phil Mahal, who joined me on uh, K Fan Radio this weekend, but he told me to take Cam Smith over Brooks Kepka. 
horrible, horrible, horrible choice. Because if I took Kepka, I think I probably would have had a better chance to win because then my Siwoo Kim at one, uh, and then Adam Scott at plus four, I think would have been my three with Kepka, which might have bought me to like, I don't know what Kepka was, mm -hmm. eight minus eight. So it probably got me to four. I don't know where Reggie finished off. We'll have to talk about that on Friday. Uh, but yeah, the auto draft, man, it ended up winning. So the fan duel people out there sometimes don't overthink it. Just auto draft and then use that for your fan duel bet. <laughs> but Sam, how'd your guys finish? Like, what did you think of the Masters? Tiger Woods did did withdraw, tweeted that out before he did it. I was like, hey, he, this looks like somebody needs to throw in the towel. And literally yeah. I woke up that morning to a text or sorry, tweet Tiger has withdrawn. But, you know, what did you think of the weekend? Yeah, uh, well, Tiger looked absolutely miserable trying to play through the rain on Friday and Saturday. So I'm actually yeah. glad he withdrew. I didn't need to see any more sad Tiger. That just makes me bummed out. <laughs> I had the winner on my team. I had John Rahm, but yep. it wasn't about having the winner. It's about having the, the most well-rounded team. Yep. And I had two of my guys miss the cut, so that basically disqualified me. So uh, even though I had the number one guy, and I, I loved watching John Rahm yesterday, he was just a killer. Uh, it did not result in a W for your guy. So it's uh, congrats to Reggie for his auto-draft win. And the ironic thing is, Ron, one of his guys withdrew before the tournament started. <laughs> so he was only rolling with three guys and they all made oh, the cut. They man. all finished under par and he wins the whole thing. Yeah. Xander Shoffley though, that, that was my guy. Like he didn't, he didn't disappoint. I think he was four under. So he, he held his own, but it was, it was, it, it's a tough, that, that, those last two days of rain, I think that really took down the guys that had to play in the rain. The guys had to play early and then play twice that same day. So then playing like, I don't know what that is. 25 holes call it or so 27 holes yeah. like that's a lot in one day to play play early in the morning like six or seven to nine holes and then you have to turn right back around at like three four o'clock and play another 18 um even though people say oh golf you, you know you're not wasting a lot of it. it's that's a lot of swings that's a lot on the bat uh these guys aren't like these aren't tiger woods guy type guys from like the the 90s and early 2000s when tiger woods was an absolute brick house uh Bre d shambo we know he used to be a weight room warrior uh but you don't have a lot of those guys out there like that so that that could be a lot on them uh we talked about the wolves as well uh they got the playoffs versus the lakers uh, we'll, we'll, we'll dive into that this week a little bit more of, of what this could look like for the play-in i know everybody's going to be tuned into the play-in and if they do beat the lakers hopefully they're not jumping on tables and celebrating uh, you know, but the punching of the walls and all the stuff. Yeah, I think you're right, Sam. Like this might be the end uh, for the Timberwolves and a horrible end to just what happened with the trade and the way this has played out. Um, lastly, like as far as LaPanta brought about the Gophers, it was sad to see them lose. I don't know. You're a big Gopher hockey guy. What, what, is your, what were your thoughts on that one? Yeah, um, gut punch. I mean, <laughs> gut punch to get there, to be that close, to be two minutes away from a national championship. You haven't won one in 20 years. And to have it in that way, that that's pretty gutting. Um, so much talent on this team that won't be back. You mentioned it. Uh, Matthew Nyes is going to the NHL. Jackson Lacombe and Brock Faber are going to the NHL. You're probably going to lose like four of your top six guys wow. uh, from, the, from the team. So they'll have to restock the cupboard next year. But the, only, the consolation, Ron, is that this is Duke basketball. This is Alabama football. This is a blue blood in college hockey. They will be back in not necessarily the championship, but they'll be back in the final eight, you know, final four frozen four next year. Like they'll, they'll have opportunities to do this almost every year. Um, but they've been unable to get over the hump. So for them to be that close, that is a, a pretty brutal way to lose. And it is a bummer to go out kind of on your heels. Like you and Anthony talked about when you've been one of the most dynamic offensive teams in college hockey. So mm -hmm. to, to look, kind of skittish and almost tentative in that third period it's just not their identity at all so that's uh just negative all around yeah well that'll do us for do it for us today people we're going to talk a lot more basketball this week a lot more draft we got a little bit more draft talk there was a big signing so we'll talk about that tomorrow odell beckham signs with the ravens so now these pieces are starting, these these domino pieces are starting to fall. I had to make sure it wasn't April Fools when I saw that one too, because I'm like, Lamar Jackson tweeting a picture of him and Odell Beckham. I'm like, this could be April Fools, but it's April 10th. So April 9th, like there's no way I, that would be the dumbest April Fools joke I've ever seen in my life. But I'm Ron Johnson. That's Sam Maxim. That was Anthony LaPanta. Please, again, like I said, make sure you subscribe to Locked On Sports Minnesota on wherever you get your iTunes. It could be, or sorry, your iPod, your uh, podcast. That could be iTunes, Spotify, iHeartMedia app, which is free. All of these are free apps. 
Our show is free. We really appreciate you guys being with us on this journey. And remember, if you want endless Vikings talk with, with uh, local experts, make sure you subscribe to the free Locked On Sports Minnesota YouTube channel where you can find all of our videos, all of our shows, and instant podcasts after every single game. The Vikings press conferences as well, delivering all the biggest news. And, of course, as the draft goes, we'll be right alongside with you. I want to thank you and have a great day.